Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video, we have a Black Library review for Warhammer 40k. We're looking at the Throne of Light, the fourth installment in the Dawn of Fire series, which takes a look at the beginnings of the Indominus Crusade in Warhammer 40,000. Now, this one is written by Guy Haley uh, and picks up a lot of the characters we saw in the first and some in the second and subsequent books as well. But a lot of things continue on from the first story in the book, which is really cool. Um, so, with that said, uh, the story for this one is The Indominus Crusade continues its war across the galaxy. The Primarch, Rebute Gilliman, has finally broken through the Orcish threat bedeviling the sectors near Fenris. Read about that in the last story. And makes ready to push on his bid to stabilize the Imperium Sanctus. But old foes stand in his way. Corfaron, the dark cardinal of the word bearers, threatens the previously stable core of the Submagnum Solar. Waves of rebellion instigated by his infiltrating priests suggest an imminent large-scale invasion by the word bearers legion. Worse yet, however, they the dark cardinals or warriors are targeting black ships. These are the ships that the Sisters of Silence run in order to gather psychics to effectively feed the Emperor and keep him alive. So they're pretty much trying to starve the Emperor and force him to, well, die. Now, through the turbulent war zone, Inquisitor Rostov continues his search for the Hand of Abaddon. Yet, when strange, miraculous visions are traced back to the astropathic relay on the planet Srinagar, his quest is diverted for the visions foretell hope for the Imperium, a hope that the fanatical worshippers of chaos will do anything at all to snuff out. Now, as always, I do like to listen to the audio versions of this book, so I listen to this on Audible, um, and, you know, I think it adds a lot, but I generally listen to them, I'm, you know, a dad, I've got limited time to actually read the books, uh, so I listen to them while I'm hobbying, building and painting models, having, you know, hobby days with friends, or indeed doing some editing computer or some chores around the house. With that said, let's get talking some more about the story. And so, this story's purpose. So, for me, I think the main thing is this story just shakes up and freshens up some plot lines in the series. Uh, make sure, you know, things keep interesting by bringing characters that maybe were separated in previous stories back together uh, and making new combinations of characters, uh, expanding on and moving certain characters on in different directions, um, and helping different characters grow. And generally, I think this just sort of refreshes and gives those secondary plot lines room to grow. The main plot line with the Arch Cardinal and the whole ring and the dark weapon that the Chaos Force are trying to get sort of does take a little bit of backstage. It's not actually mentioned pretty much, not at all, within this story. Um, and instead, this mostly focuses on the dreams and visions that Inquisitor Rostov of the Ordo Xenos is having, um, which some members of the Chaos Force are having as well. And this opens up, I guess, a secondary plot line. While maybe this is the hope for the Imperium, you know, this uh, character to maybe save them is the hope where um, obviously the ring and all those dark things we've seen in the previous two stories are the chaos's sort of grand scheme. So we're sort of starting to see these two major plot lines now, I think, move forward. And I'll be really interested to see where the next book goes with these if we get, you know, these two things sort of hitting on against each other. Um, but for me, this is, you know, just setting up and moving things and giving the Imperium something to go after rather than them sort of fighting these same plotline on either side. We're getting, you know, these two different things. And so our main character throughout this story, though, is Fabian, a girlfriend. We get other cool characters coming back, like Messinius uh, is in the story as well, which I think is a really great addition. You know, the white console uh, captain that is sort of helping... Gilliman lead the forces around and we get you know some of the other historians as well along with other characters from the original Avenging Sun story coming in as well and coming back which is really fun um like uh Eloise Athagay as well Farron is back in the story as well uh, and he's got a cool little plot line but without a doubt Fabian is sort of where this story focuses uh it's all about him going off with Farron uh to effectively reinforce and reinstate uh, the historians within uh, the battle fleet with 
uh, you know, the other characters, Messinius and that, that we've learned about, give them more, I guess, uh, reinforcements. And also, Farron is bringing some reinforcements to some Black Templars as well that have a crusade that's sort of gone a little bit lost in the area. But, um, you know, Fabian is what we know him to be. If you've read the other stories, you sort of know a little bit about Fabian. He's this uh, sort of wild card. He is disobedient. He sort of, you know always doing things a little bit different um, and not sort of by the book but that's sort of why Gulliman likes him uh, as well and so over the course of the story I think Fabian has a really nice little story arc on this he goes from I guess being one under the Primarch to sort of um, imposing himself on this new place that he's in he doesn't have Gilliman uh, over the top of him anymore he is sort of in charge of things now properly and it's really quite interesting to see him go from that sort of level where he was to now this character with a little bit of control on the situation and uh, learning and gaining some leadership qualities as well throughout uh, his time within the story and so what does this book do well though? I think for me it doesn't dwell on any single plot line that it's trying to tell a story for too long. It chops and changes, you know, we get different parts with all the other all the characters that have their place within the story. Obviously Fabian pops up more than any other character. Probably Rostov next most of all I would say. Um, but for me it's really interesting, you know, that it doesn't dwell too long. It keeps you interested in the story, keeps things moving along. Um, and also, those secondary stories in this are really strong and have some great twists and turns in them. Um, the Black Templar storyline with Aaron is particularly great. And so, who would like this book? And for me, I think this is for people that are listening to the Dawn of Fire series. This isn't a book I would recommend to anyone as a one-off, like I've sort of said, where you can probably enjoy uh, The Gate of Bones without listening to the first story. I don't think there's any particular story you can listen to. Uh, I don't think you can listen to this particular story without having listened to the other three books, mainly because you obviously Dawn of... Uh, fire the first one avenging sun has a lot in common with this and probably the most but you can't sort of listen to uh wolf time without listening to the one before it and you'd probably need to listen to wolf time to understand some of the things that are happening in this as well um so yeah all three stories that come before this probably need to be read and we're at that sort of point in the series which is fine this is just going to be a story for people who are invested in the Dawn of Fire series. In summary, things are heating up in the series. I think we're finally really getting some traction going with this story. Uh, we've seen sort of the first major confrontations in this story. I won't spoil which ones, but there are major characters from the Chaos and the Imperium that come head to head in this, which is really cool. Um, it's sort of what you want to see. It's definitely not massive confrontations between them. It's definitely, you know, the big characters on both sides sort of meeting for the first time properly. Then we've also got some great character progression. I think a lot of the characters in this have some really nice progression for them. Fabian, Farron, uh, even characters like Mycenaeus and that have some nice progression with the story. So really, really fun. Um, for me, this is really enjoyable. I look forward to, I think, the Black Library reveal show is where we're going to see the next book for this series, uh, you know, revealed. And I look forward to listening to it. Um, quite, you know, attached to the characters in this. And I really want to see where it goes. If you have read, indeed, Throne of Light, or you've been reading the Dawn of Fire series, I'd love to hear from you and hear what you've been enjoying, your favourite characters in the series. Let us know down in the comments below. And so that is the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But also, if you'd like to, drop a comment down below letting us know what you enjoyed about the video. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our little community, here we have a Discord server for Cinefall Gaming, where we chat all things Wargaming, and indeed just chat a bunch of good friends all chatting there. It's really lovely. Uh, there's a link to that in the video's description. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, the best ways to do that are linked in the video's description as well. We have our Patreon, YouTube, YouTube members on there which are great ways to help support the channel but also if you'd like to grab yourself some channel merch we have teespring and kofi both linked there as well 
As a special thank you to our Patreons and YouTube members, we'd like to give them all a shout out for helping support the channel. So thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lowe, Alaron Shot First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Thee, The Rising Eight, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Bloobs, Benjamin Swallows, Red Martin, Iron Grinch, Nuffs, and Nicholas Colomos. And to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Ronya Locklorick, The Johnny 84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, John Castle, Davis Weir, James South, and James Tillman. Thank you all for supporting the channel. It means the absolute world and lets us to keep doing what we're doing. A special thanks as well to Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing artwork to the channel, and indeed to everyone who helps come and film battle reports or helps run the Discord server. You're all amazing. Thank you all so much. Stay safe, everyone. Stay well. And most of all, keep finding that war against the great. Ciao for now.